Esin Tatar has just been elected president of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, but he rejects the UN framework for talks to resolve the Cyprus problem and says there should be a two-state solution. He also says that the Turkish Cypriots should receive their fair share of the hydrocarbons in the East Mediterranean, and he's got the full backing of the Turkish government. Now he's started to reopen this area, the ghost town known as Mirash or Verosha, a place where many Greek Cypriots used to live, and for the past 46 years, it's been in the control of the Turkish military. I'm Andrew Hopkins, and I've been speaking to Ersin Tata one-on-one. -on -one. Esin Tata, thank you very much for talking to TRT World. We're here in this area known as Mirash or Verosha. Why have you decided to open it now? It's been waiting for six, 46 years. Signed uh, Mr. President Erdogan yesterday. In his conversation to the press, he said, I remember very well, 1974 and now 2020 amounting to 46 years. In the last 46 years, we have had various opportunities in the international intercommunal talks and other confidence building measures from time to time that the Turkish civilians would give away Varosha, Marash to our neighbors in the south in return either for a global agreement to solve the Cyprus problem as part of a global agreement or in exchange for, for example, at one time, when Denktash was the president and top negotiator, they will allow direct flights from various countries to Erjan Airport. As you know, we still don't have direct flights except Turkey. We can only have direct flights from Turkey. Other countries, unfortunately, because of the Greek veto, we have to go through Turkey, you know, from England, where most of our uh, Turkish civilians who left Cyprus, they, go, they went to England, they are British citizens, and also Turkish Cypriots. We have hundreds of thousands of Turkish Cypriots living in England, British subject. And also we have a number of British residents in North Cyprus. They all suffer because uh, some of them at least four times a year they travel back to England, back to Cyprus, and they have to go through uh, Turkey, which means higher cost and they lose uh, time. So it's very costly and time consuming and not to have direct rights. So at one time it was serious on the, t on the table Conf as under the confidence building measures that Varosha or Marash would have been exchanged in return for uh, Greek Cypriots, not vetoing direct flights from, for example, the United Kingdom. But unfortunately, Greek Cypriots refused to say uh, yes at all these times, and we have missed all these opportunities for the uh, good of all Cypriots. And uh, that's where we are now. After 46 years, we thought, what's the point of uh, keeping this place closed for another number of years when this can be opened up and uh, original owners could come back to, our, to, to their land and properties and at least enjoy uh, their properties hereafter. And this policy, I think, uh, has received a lot of support because it is the ideal one, it is the logical one. Uh, basically, from a human rights point of view, it is the right move because although obviously it is within the boundary of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, and it is a property and uh, uh, within the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Greek Cypriots uh, can come and operate their businesses or repossess their properties, uh, up to them, but within the boundary of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. So would you say your motivation or part of your motivation is really frustration at the lack of progress in peace talks over the last 46 years? Then. Basically, we have a lot of uh, differences. Uh, the South, they still want a federal solution, but uh, they have refused even to give the Turkish Cypriots political equality, which is one of the, uh, obviously, uh, prerequisites of a stable and lasting solution 
political equality. We have not been able to achieve that. Uh, as you know, they said no to the Annan plan. At Kranz Montanada in 2017, about three years ago now, they refused to go all the way. And uh, even in the five plus conference where all the guarantor powers were there, the opportunity was unfortunately missed. And it was stated that uh, basically it was the last chance and the last chance was, was gone in Kranz Montanata. Uh, even Akinji gave his support to this saying that unfortunately we have missed the opportunity. Uh, the table has been turned down and uh, we will forget about it because this was the last chance. It, it, was, a, it was a shame that we missed this opportunity. Uh, Turkey's uh, uh, foreign minister, Can Çavuşoğlu, said the same thing. Two states living by uh, side by side. What we have now in Cyprus is that we have two states living side by side. These two states could cooperate on various issues. Uh, or there are many, for example, on health matters. I've just uh, expressed my uh, good emotions to the South because they have pandemic increasing these days uh, to various uh, high numbers. And I said our hospitals are free. We have a, a, a new hospital now opened by President Erdogan yesterday. Uh, we can have hundreds uh, COVID patients to be treated in the north. We have a lot of opportunities from time to time to cooperate on various matters. And this is how this uh, uh, Cyprus program should be evolved into a more uh, stable structure, I think. Therefore, I am representing the new vision, the new set of ideas, and basically I have propagated this to uh, all those who have got in touch with me, saying that uh, if we are realistic and we, we are sincere, there is no point in wasting time any longer because wasting time gives false hopes to all those involved and this is no good, this is not humane. This is what I want to ask you about as well because I think the, from the Turkish government side and probably from your side as well, as you said, there's this kind of feeling that the Greek Cypriots are not that well disposed to negotiating because they think they hold all the cards, they're in the EU, they can block Turkey's membership, they can block the lifting of the embargo on the Turkish Cypriots as well. So is what you're doing with uh, Marash Varosha at the moment uh, part as well of a kind of attempt to prod the Greek Cypriots, if you like, into some kind of meaningful talks, into meaningful action, because this is an area which was quite important during various talks and negotiations in the past. Greek Cypriots used to live here. So is that part of the motivation, part of what you want? Well, obviously it leads to that, because what we are saying, basically, you have refused to uh, basically uh, make some sacrifice so that you build a future together with the Turkish Cypriots on the island. You insisted on a federal structure that would lead to a unified structure. Uh, the, what I'm just saying is very important. The common uh, people and uh, normal people in the street don't understand the details. But uh, what I'm saying now is very important. Uh, and, and this is in the footnotes and this is all in the literature. What the Greeks aspire is basically by uh, obtaining a federal structure, the name would be obviously Cyprus Federal Republic, where at the surface of things you will have two communities and two founding states, but their model leads to a unified state. Why? Because sh uh, at the moment uh, the recognized government is the Cyprus Republic. Although it was co-founded in 1960 with the two communities, as you know, we have been kicked out. The recognized Cyprus Republic will be one of the states and the other one would be Virgin birth, a Turkish civil state. Virgin birth. Because the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is not recognized, and they refuse to recognize it, at least for some time before an, uh, before, before an agreement, all the rules and laws and legislation of the Turkish civil so far, in the last 46 years, it will all be gone when you have the agreement. Because they desire that the Turkish civil state is a virgin birth. If it's a virgin birth, how do we claim what we have been doing for the last 40 years uh, to be part of this Cyprus federal structure on, on day number one? Therefore, it's a threat to us that if it goes to a unified uh, republic, uh, basically Turkish will lose a lot of things because they will not have the 
background in there to support uh, our entity as a different state. And especially within Europe, where, where you have free movement of labor, free movement of capital, free movement of everything, as you know, in Europe, we will not be able to protect ourselves from Greek Cypriots or other Europeans, including Greeks from Greece, to coming and settling, buying property, making investment, and basically do as they desire in the north of the island, where we will be uh, exposed and we will be in a weaker position within a uh, bigger structure. There are one other question on Marash as well is there are two uh, United Nations Security Council resolutions uh, concerning Marash and Varosha, uh, which say that if it's going to be re reopened, the former residents should be allowed to come back also. There were attempts to bring the area up under UN control as well. Do you think any of these Security Council resolutions have but validity still? We, we are trying to uh, give the message out that we will not do anything to the contrary. Uh, as I say, the, the Immovable Property Board is a recognized body in the North. Uh, European institutions recognize and the whole world community recognize. It's a, a legal formation and basically its decision is uh, what would be the binding factor. As you know, this Marash area, uh, it's claimed that it belongs to EVCAF, our uh, foundation, EVCAF. And they have a lot of documents saying that all this land belongs to them. And up to 1963, they used to get rent from these property owners. They will also apply to the Immobile Property Board. Greek Cypriots will apply to the Immobile Property Board. Whoever has any property will be able to apply to the Immobile Property Board recognized by the International Community and European Court of Justice. And that body will decide who gets what. Therefore, our recommendation to all the Greek Cypriots and to other interested parties who have uh, vested interests in this part of Cyprus, in uh, this Varosha or Marash region, is to apply to the Immoral Property Board and uh, get what your right is. We are not, I'm underlining, we are not distributing the property here to Turkish civilians or people coming from outside just for political gain. This is something that we are not doing. I, I, I want to reiterate this uh, in a very uh, strong manner. This is not something we will do. Therefore, we will not doing anything contrary to United Nations uh, regulations. When they talk about United Nations uh, being here, we have no problem. They have two observers here at the moment. They, increase, they can increase the observers so that they can observe what goes on in this area. Do you think there might be a situation arise though because of the uh, Ottoman era foundations, endowments who own a lot of the land here, people who thought that they owned their buildings, when a ruling comes they found they don't own them but they can maybe have them back but uh, on a rental basis. Do you foresee these kinds well, of problems in I, I will leave that to the Immovable Property Board. What decision the Immovable Property Board decides should get uh, worldwide recognition because they are an internationally recognized uh, legal instrument. Uh, when we had the Marash resolutions in the United Nations years, years before, we did not have the Immovable Property Board established yet. Therefore, Immobile Property Board, recognized by European uh, Human Rights Court and other institutions, is, I think, a very uh, important body as far as this matter is concerned, because what they decide should get respect from the other side. If our Bank of Solidarity, FGAF Foundation, doesn't get the right result, but like, they should also accept this result. I have no other way. I have some uh, close friends who are uh, criticizing me. I'm saying I'm sorry. This is the only way I, I can follow. Because I cannot uh, be seen to be acting against the uh, international legal position. I will not do anything against the United Nations Security Council resolutions. On to the, the issue of the Cyprus problem as a whole, you've had a meeting with the Greek Cypriot president recently, uh, Nikos Anastasiadis. What did you tell him? Basically, we uh, discussed in private, uh, we discussed our difficulties. We discussed uh, my election and that uh, although it was a difficult election, it is 
giving a message that my policies are on the whole uh, accepted and uh, uh, even uh, it was such an important election because as I say I am representing a new policy and this new policy got to authority got the right uh, approval from the uh, Turkish Cypriot community which is very encouraging. So you told him, I presume, that you see the way forward as a two-state solution. What was his reaction to that? Well, I don't think he was uh, categorically uh, refusing it just like that. Although uh, he didn't say, obviously, uh, this is a simple issue and we can go ahead easily. Uh, it is something that I think he expected from me because I've been saying this all along for the last so many years and especially in this last year when propagating so when he saw me uh, person in person uh, uh, f looking at my face he wasn't expecting any different to be honest therefore it, it wasn't a big issue uh, what is important is basically to convince the peoples it's not only what Anastasia thinks it's what the Greek Cypriot thinks and I'm basically giving this message, message again to our Greek Cypriot neighbors. We have been discussing this federal structure for the last 40 years, maybe 50 years. In fact, my friends, uh, advisors tell me that this federal concept has been discussed since 1968, uh, including Tengtash, uh, Kibyanu and Kredis talks way before. Uh, and therefore, it's an old issue and it's got nowhere because the Greek Cypriots, in fact, or in simple terms, they don't want to share authority and wealth of Cyprus together with the Turkish Cypriots. They see us as a minority and the minority community does not uh, basically, as far as they are concerned, deserve to be an equal partner in the resources, wealth management and uh, basically uh, sharing the authority. They, they, don't, they don't respect that and therefore their position is that this Cyprus Federal Republic will evolve into a unified republic and in that unified republic the dominating partners would be Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots will just be the minority. We will never allow uh, this uh, process to get there because we believe that we should have our own sovereignty, we should have freedom, we should design and basically have a say in our future we want the Turkish guarantee to continue. Therefore, yeah, this is the policy I represent, and I will represent it until uh, to, the, to, 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 to the last point. You've spoken to Dominic Raab as well, the British Foreign Minister. Uh, Britain's one of the guarantor powers for Cyprus under the international treaties which created the independent state back in 1960, So, along with Greece and Turkey. So was he... Uh, what was his attitude towards a, a two-state solution? Uh, obviously, the United Kingdom, although they are a guarantor power, they are a facilitator. Uh, United Nations and others, they don't want to be seen to be supporting one side and putting across uh, new uh, expectations. They are facilitators. He listened to me. He took notes. He understood what I'm saying. Uh, he wished me all the best. Well, yes, he, he spoke to Anastasia also, and he probably said the same thing to him. So it's up to us in Cyprus, the two sides, to find a solution to this problem. If Greek Cypriots are regiment and, and they don't want to move to basically accommodate our needs, then uh, as in the last 50 years, we, got no, we will get nowhere. But that doesn't mean that because we will get nowhere, I will change my mind, I will change my position, and give in to the Greek Cypriots. That's not something that they should expect from me. I, my position, my position, at the moment we have two states. This is uh, my strong point. As I, and I told Anastasia, we have two states already. It's not something that we will work on to create. Uh, that would be difficult, obviously, if we didn't have these two states. And all of a sudden we said, okay, the best solution is two states. Let's establish two states. That would have taken years. They would have taken a lot of other things, and maybe somebody would have protect, protected us, protected us from establishing two states. But at the moment, we have two states, and this is the way forward. And in fact, it's the easiest one. 
is the easier way forward because we have two states already. After your meeting with the Greek Cypriot president, the UN put out a statement saying that uh, you and the guarantor powers had agreed to sort of work towards having an informal meeting about the future of Cyprus. How optimistic are you about that and how soon can it happen? Well, it's five plus one meeting, it's Turkey, Cyprus, Greek, Cyprus, Greece, uh, United Kingdom and Turkey and the United Nations. That's five plus one. This was first proposed by Mevlut Çavuşoğlu, Foreign Secretary of uh, Turkey, and he proposed this as an informal meeting. In this informal meeting, we put on the table what our expectations are, and the five plus parties will discuss what the way forward should be. And we believe that if we are positioned this, and we are uh, putting this matter on the table with a lot of support, why it has got to the stage, because we have not been able to agree on various issues and on various opportunity or occasions uh, the way forward. It was, it, so, so all these opportunities collapsed. In fact, Rolandis, former uh, foreign secretary uh, on the other side uh, in the Greek Cypriot government, he said, I think, a few days ago that we have missed all these opportunities and he counted them and he said that on 17 different uh, times Greek Cypriots refused an agreement in Cyprus. When the Turkish president was here visiting Mirash, he said in one of his uh, speeches that uh, inshallah, soon in the future, you will be going to Azerbaijan and then we will take the next step. What, what did he mean by that? Well, basically, uh, Turkish Cypriots uh, have been struggling for a long time. We have had no international support except Turkey. But things have got to that stage uh, these days that uh, we deserve some support from the others. And we can start from the old uh, close friends of Turkey, as it were. Azerbaijan is a very close friend of Turkey, Turkey and ourselves. We have thousands of Azeri people living in the north of Cyprus at the moment. And we have good ties, good trade, and other expectations from Azerbaijan. And I have announced on various uh, occasions that we have wholeheartedly supported Azerbaijan in their struggle of uh, Karabakh. And now that they have got or regained most of Karabakh, we are very uh, happy on their behalf. And yesterday in my uh, speech to the people who came to the uh, Bayram meeting, uh, basically I've said to them that Turkish Cypriots are together with Azeri uh, brothers and their victory is our victory. I congratulated the Azeri people. So if you go on a visit to Azerbaijan in your capacity as president of Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus and they accept you on that basis, does that mean that Azerbaijan is going to recognize the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus say, as an independent state? I, I don't want to say categorically anything uh, which might not take place, but basically I know very well and I've spoken to them uh, Azerbaijan people are very close and very sympathetic to the Turkish Cypriots. Uh, it's just one of those things uh, because Azerbaijan is very near Turkey, uh, have good contacts with Turkey, and Turkey's position in Cyprus, as you know, at this moment in time, is very good. Our relationship with Turkey and Turkey wholeheartedly supports us, and these are all factors to influence Azerbaijan. And just one question on the, the situation in the East Mediterranean at the moment. Obviously, the situation seems to have calmed down a little bit, but the issue still hasn't been resolved. We've still got uh, Turkish research vessels. They're still working in the area. There's still disagreements <coughs> over where maritime borders should lie. So what's your plan going forward to try and resolve this issue? Basically, we are cooperating together with Turkey. Turkey and Turkish Cypriot state, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, we have common rights in this Eastern Mediterranean. And when we act together, we have a very strong position. Because when you look at the map, uh, Greece is further away. Greek islands are little near Anatolia, near Turkey. Therefore, how can they uh, basically uh, insist that a Greece agreement with Greek Cypriots, and when I say Greece, they mean these little islands, can uh, take the place of an agreement of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus with Turkey. Because Turkey and uh, North Cyprus are very close. When you look at the map, you see the proximity. And the biggest uh, country 
in this eastern Mediterranean with the longest coastline, nearly 1,900 kilometers of coastline of Turkey to the eastern Mediterranean, together with Turkish ship or northern Cyprus, we are a strong force and we can claim a lot of property in the seas uh, because uh, it's supported by legal uh, documentation. It's not just public say, it's supported by legal do documentation. So we are very hopeful that we will get uh, the right share. We, are, we have to move together with Turkey because Turkey is our motherland and Turkey will give us our share. Esin Tata, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that this message goes to uh, around the world through TRT World. Uh, I thank you, Andrew, and also all those people working for this program in TRT World. Thank you very much. Thank you.